Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Traeger Day. Yes, today we're going to cook a turkey and uh, a little differently than I've ever done, I'm going to cook it in the Traeger and I'm going to be reviewing a new thermo um, thermometer that was sent to me uh, with four probes and so I'm really interested and it's tied into my cell phone. Uh, unlike the other uh, uh, measuring device I have now where it's all wireless. So we'll give that a try today. So let's get to work. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob and today we're cooking a turkey. And at the same time we're going to review a new thermometer called the, uh, what's it called? A Inkbird. And uh, it's got four probes to it. So it'd be kind of interesting. I thought a turkey is perfect for this. So we're going to put probes in the legs, we'll put some in the chest, and uh, all over the bird and see what it looks like. The biggest thing you got to do that's different is uh, uh, my other wireless. Uh, this one works with your cell phone. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is get thing, this thing powered up. You want to put what's called their BBQ Go app on your phone. And uh, it was very simple. You turn on your Bluetooth and uh, I synced it up quite easily. So uh, my phone is totally ready to go and we're going to cook a bird today so get a pencil and paper out because we're going to do an unusual turkey in the Traeger today so today we're doing a 14 pound turkey we bought this about five days ago we've been thawing it out the whole time so this is a completely thawed bird so we're going to open it up we're going to clean it up we're not going to use the spare parts um, and Today's going to be kind of interesting because the first time I'm going to actually put butter under the skin and I found the technique to do that and I'll share that with you. And we're going to cook this in the Traeger. should take about, oh, four hours or so and I'm cooking with, or actually smoking with oak this year. So let's get to work. So this is our turkey. We're using 14 pounds. I took out the innards, uh, cleaned it up. I'm going to dry it out with a paper towel. And we're going to cook in a roasting pan today like this because we're going to try to make our own gravy too. So, uh, um, by the way, you can get these at Bed and Bath at a very uh, reasonable price when it's around Thanksgiving. And uh, hopefully we can make a good gravy. To begin this recipe, we need lots of butter, three cubes, and we're going to need fresh thyme and rosemary. And we'll be chopping up our thyme and rosemary into about a oh, tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half quantity uh, to add to the butter. We'll also be adding th four or five uh, fresh pieces of garlic. Make sure and chop them up as fine as possible so you can get the flavor into the butter that we're going to use. Now it's time to take this butter and put it into the bowl so we can start blending our ingredients. Make sure your butter is nice and soft. Here is our garlic and then uh, right after the garlic is going to be our thyme and rosemary. And uh, just blend this as nice as possible because we'll be using this to smother the inside and outside of our bird. And when I say inside, I'm talking about inside the skin. Here we're doing a few dashes, maybe three or four or five, uh, whatever you like, uh, of just salt and pepper. It's a 50-50 mix. Once again, make sure this is blended well, because this is going to be our flavoring for our bird. Next, we're going to want some whole carrots and uh, clean them up really good, cut off the ends. And then we're going to chop them up into smaller pieces. And sometimes if they're really big carrots, cut them in half too. Uh, this is all for flavoring for our gravy because we're going to be using a roasting pan in a minute here you'll see and we're just going to throw these whole pieces and half and I actually cut them up a little more later uh, to flavor our gravy or all of our drippings are going to go in on these carrots and then going to go on some fresh or whole uh, celery cut the ends off cut them into smaller pieces and uh, just you know, maybe one inch pieces or so and then we're going to spread those all over the rest roasting pan at the bottom and as you can see we just start uh, it starts actually looking very pretty uh the next thing we'll be doing after this is adding an onion and normally i'd use a normal white onion or yellow 
uh, but I only had a purple onion, so we use this. But you don't have to cut it up too fine. We're just looking to add flavor to our gravy. So just cut these up into a, oh, a couple of slices like you're seeing here and just throw them in the bottom of the pan. You'll also be adding, <laughs> yes indeed, the garlic into the pan too. We're going to be putting whole garlic uh, into the pan. Break them up a little bit so the flavors will uh, incorporate with all the juices. Of course, I always wish that I could uh, break up uh, garlic a little better. So I just use the knife technique, squish them, unpeel them, and then break them up a little bit and throw them in the roasting pan. So here we go. Doesn't this look great? Um, <laughs> it actually looks delicious, but this is only for the gravy, really. And uh, you'll see here in a minute, we'll be adding some rosemary. Uh, this whole pieces, you don't have to cut these up. It's all for flavor and rosemary and thyme. And uh, we'll be throwing that in the pan also. As you can see here, I'm just breaking the little branches of thyme into uh, the pan just to make sure it spreads out a little bit. Uh, this is going to be a nice potent uh, in, uh, addition to your gravy and believe me your gravy is going to taste wonderful here's the finished product last thing was we add a box of chicken broth to it and uh, believe it or not you could add even more if you wanted to uh, because uh, we didn't get as much drippings off the turkeys as I thought I would get but um, if you need more just add more chicken broth and here it is. We put the rack on there and get ready to uh, plant our turkey on there. But first, we got to get the turkey ready. Here I'm doing my 50 50 salt and pepper into the inside of the bird. Uh, very, very liberal. And right after that, we're going to add some rosemary and thyme in the internal part of the turkey. And uh, I know it seems like an overkill, but believe me, it wasn't. Once again, just break off little branches and pieces. You don't have to. Uh, pull the leaves off or anything it's all for just flavor into the meat and of course don't forget <laughs> don't shoot your your garlic all over the place uh, throw some uh, cloves of garlic into the center also now here's something new that I've never done before but separating the skin from the meat and getting a layer in there so just work your hand in there do not damage the skin and you start using your butter mix Grab a handful of that stuff, shove it right in there. Use your other hand to uh, hold it in place and then remove your hand. And then uh, uh, you'll get it incorporated into it. But oh my gosh, this was a great idea and it worked really well. And you're kind of going to wonder, well, what's going to keep the juices in there? And uh, that's where I learned how to tie up a bird a little differently. But first of all, let's make sure and get this uh, uh, as much butter, garlic uh, mixture here into the meat which will just give your meat a wonderful flavor. Then grab some uh, twine, of course, some cotton twine, uh, maybe about four feet worth. Come up from the bottom, and this is really new for me. <laughs> and uh, you bring it around and, and then around the back of the legs and tie it tight, and you'll see that the, that the skin draws tight against the breast. And then, uh, of course, tuck your... Uh, wings underneath there then bring their string after you tie it off uh, into one little loop bring it around the back side of the legs and then tie up the legs and voila you've got a way of holding all that butter goodness into the breast uh, in the skin so it doesn't come out when it's cooking and uh, that's probably why I didn't get as much juices as I thought I was going to get at the bottom of the pan but uh, then uh, of course make sure you put a, a olive oil on your bird because we're going to salt it down really good. I use kosher salt. And by the way, the extra butter put into the inside of the bird. Uh, so yeah, don't let any of that go to waste. Here you'll see I'm just put a lot of kosher salt on there. It's got a long ways to go and that is what helps flavor the meat. After I've salted, I've added some fresh ground pepper all over the bird and you'll see uh, the finished product right here all peppered up and ready to rock and roll now it's time to put the bird on there and uh i got this pan uh, at bed and bath very reasonable price and i uh, had a coupon too and then then it's time to <laughs> yep more inject the bird so i'm going to inject it with a buttery goodness 
You can get this at your grocery store. I just poured it into a bowl, um, put it into the syringe, and this started going throughout the bird. Try not to put too many holes into the skin, um, especially around the breast, so you can hold in all that buttery goodness. And uh, yeah, just inject it and put the flavor in there. And trust me, uh, you're you're not going to have a plain white turkey. It's going to have so much flavor. You'll love it. All right, guys. So we got our turkey ready to go, and then we're going to put our probes in with our new thermometer. Going to break out the old Traeger, get it fired up, for, uh, warmed up for five minutes, then take it to 300 degrees. So I'm going to set it for 325 because it seems to be about 25 degree difference. And uh, we uh, we'll get our probes all set up and then we'll monitor it with our cell phone. So it'll be really cool. Now it's time to add the probes from the new Inkbird thermometer that I have. It has four probes, but I'm using three. I'm going to put them uh, one in each chest and one in the leg area. And remember, I can monitor this for my cell phone or from the unit itself. Uh, it's a lot of wires. All right, so we're going to try our new thermometer. And uh, it's got four probes, but I'm only going to use three. I'm going to monitor pretty much the, uh, the chest area and the thigh area, and uh, it just you just put the probe in, turn it on, uh, then you have an app on your phone and you can monitor all the probes at the same time, so it's really cool. On this unit, there's a little off-on switch in the back, and then it does a little test, and then you'll be able to monitor the temperatures from the unit itself or your cell phone. Now I have my trigger at 300 degrees and I'm adding my bird. You will be able to see all the probes coming out of the bird. Uh, goes off to the side, has a magnet, sticks right to the trigger. My bird looks like Frankenstein. Alright guys, so we're cooking away now. It's going to take about three to four hours. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say about this new thermometer is what's really cool about this thing is it's got a magnet in the back. So as soon as I sat it down, it stuck right to my uh, trigger and I kind of like that. So uh, anyway, uh, just to review, we uh, used a lot of garlic, uh, salted the bird really well. Um, we used a lot of rosemary and thyme, not only in the mix below, uh, and by the way, all those carrots, all those celery, all that stuff will be strained out, and we're just doing it for the flavor, and then we're going to use a roux and make our gravy from that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how well this probe works how the different temperatures relate. Um, like I said, we injected the entire chicken with uh, some butter uh, injection um, flavoring. So it uh, should be a delicious bird. So hang in there, guys. We'll cook it until we get the temperatures to 160. Um, one, you want to take a bird up to uh, 165. Remember, uh, meat continues to cook after you pull it. So uh, it's going to be important to let it rest for a while because it's going to continue cooking to hit that 165 mark. So uh, looking forward to a really good bird for Thanksgiving guys. The Inkbird thermometer also uh, displays the four, three probes actually that I'm monitoring the bird with. So here's a sneak peek of the bird just before we pulled it and uh, it looks delicious. Once we pulled the bird we took all the juices out and poured it into a strainer into a pot. Uh, this is it right here. We also added a little bit more chicken broth to it because we needed more quantity and then we made a roux using butter 50-50 uh, mix of butter and um, flour and mixed it well and then we started blending the two together to start thickening our gravy um, and just keep stirring try not to uh, overcook your uh, your gravy but oh my gosh uh, as we got it thickened up talk about flavor this will be the most flavorful gravy you've ever made and if you need to water it down at all, you just add water. This, of course, is our glamour shot. Just before I took the bird and cut it up for serving for our family dinner. Uh, you can see the rosemary and thyme in there. Uh, buttery goodness. Every bite had wonderful flavor. No plain Jane stuff. It was great. Everybody at dinner loved our meal. So, guys, enjoy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.